For 250 years, St Paul's was the tallest building in London. Then came the 1960s. Now the post office tower soaring to 620 feet. But look what we've done since then. Today, BT Tower's not even in London's top 10 tallest as we climb 60, 70, 80 floors high. In London, over 80 high-rise buildings are currently under construction over 20 storeys, and there's permission for another 233. This is the scariest part going over. With all the buildings going up all the time, um, it's like you'll never be out of work. 80% of the new towers are residential. London's skyline changing forever. And this is going to be the most spectacular place in London. The new high life, where a mere studio flat can cost over a million. We're now looking at the casino element of property. We're going to end up with an oversupply of properties that nobody wants to buy. Whoever imagined there'd be a penthouse in Stratford selling for 15 million? What a view. This is 42 storeys high in Stratford, something that just a decade ago would have been unimaginable. It's a big day for Manhattan Loft Gardens. They've reached the top. Founder Harry Handelsman has the Midas touch. He brought lofts to Clerkenwell and Bankside when no one thought them cool. Now it's high rise in Stratford. High rise living has become very much a part of the London sky scene. But to be honest, it's one skyscraper next to another skyscraper. But most of them are sold overseas, perhaps for developers to make money and for those that speculated at the right period of time also to make money. But I really wanted to see is, you know, how can we redefine the high rise living? So this will be a, a high rise garden? This will be a garden and it will be a communal garden for the residents. Stratford is actually a fantastic example where, for, where affordability exists. Studios here start at half a million up to that 15 million pound penthouse. So many won't be able to afford it. Does that trouble you? It does trouble me. I think, I think, I think if you, you know, I don't, I don't think what makes London great is the rich, the wealthy, that's not at all. As fur clad clients enjoy these views, 15 miles away in Richmond Park, Protesters gather to mourn how this Stratford Tower turned their historic St Paul's view from this into this. This is obviously a very sad day, uh, seeing the view destroyed in this way. But we can... It turns out no one granting planning permission for the Stratford Tower considered this historic protected view. This is a 300 year old view. We would love for the building to be taken down, but realistically that's not going to happen. Skyline battles are being fought across London. Built in 1695, these Wren-designed Whitechapel almshouses face being overshadowed by a Sainsbury's development. The proposal now is to build on the site behind an array of towers, one of which is 28 storeys high. It's wrong, it's wrong. I think everyone in Whitechapel should boycott Sainsbury's. The only reason they want a tower is because they want luxury apartments with incredible views of central London. OK, good evening, everybody. Decision time at the council. The man from Sainsbury's warns them that if their towers refused, the entire redevelopment will no longer be viable, along with the promised 127 affordable homes. We'll return for the vote later. And then the neighbours came out quite a ways to... Architect Barbara Weiss believes councils are being bulldozed into the 436 proposed new towers for London. The borrowers are very strapped for cash. The way it goes is that a developer suggests building a certain height of building and in exchange they will offer facilities and the facilities could be a school, they could be, could be a swimming pool, it could be a library and then there's a lot of horse trading that goes on and the local residents uh, have very little say. Such deals are totally legal. The boom in, in uh, skyscrapers is not something that really improves the lot of the average uh, Londoner. The flats are much too expensive. But our suspicion is that we will have whole areas where there are just a few flats that are going to have lights on at night and they can resell them as new in a, f a few years down the line. 
This is One Blackfriars in Southwark, where the council aspires to 35% affordable housing in new projects. Yet here, 50 stories of pure luxury. A one-bed studio sells for 1.15 million. Not one single home in this tower is affordable. Instead, the developers gave the council 29 million pounds to build that type of home somewhere else. That's only six million more than they're asking for one single penthouse. But the regeneration has created 1,000 jobs on a site derelict for over a decade. The biggest problem with developments like this is that their stated aim is to increase the value of property in the area. And that's not a good thing because people already struggle to find somewhere that they can afford to buy around here and it's going to make it even worse. Double whammy is the fact that the council will take the money for the affordable housing and spend it in the south of the borough so people who need social housing in this area will have to move. That's just not fair. Up river in Vauxhall, here's what developers want. A recent investigation into this 50-storey luxury block found its 214 flats had only 60 people registered to vote. Well, somewhere up there, it's even been reported that one oligarch has imported his own Russian Orthodox chapel into his 51 million pound penthouse. The developers wouldn't talk to us, but George Turner tries to keep track. It blows away the myth that the development industry have been peddling that this high rise boom has anything to do with delivering the type of housing that London needs. Probably the majority of homes in this building uh, don't have people registered to the electoral roll, which means that they're highly likely to be used as either holiday homes or buy to leave homes that are there as an investment opportunity. I think the only hope we have is that these developments are so speculative and so crazy from an economic point of view that the turning market will wipe a lot of them out. All these proposed towers are worrying some investors. Very few people will lose any sleep over multi-millionaire foreign investors losing money on property. But what the concern is that well, it may well infect the wider market. Confidence is everything in the housing market. And if we see the top end of the housing market start to topple, that could have wider implications. I mean, there's plans there for 60-storey towers. While most developers remained camera shy, others point out that their deals with councils still provide most new affordable housing, even with their lawyers often having the upper hand. Local authorities need more resources. Uh, the average pay for a planning barrister is 10 times what a local planner gets. What's not so obvious is you know, the amount of affordable housing that gets provided off the back of the scheme. So the scheme we're at here in Dollar Bay has allowed 39% affordable housing. And finally, we're back to Whitechapel. Sainsbury's warned if their high rise was refused, 127 affordable homes would be lost. Can I see all of those in favor of the officer's recommendation to refuse this application, please? That is unanimous. One less tower, over 400 more, still in the pipeline.